Thank you, Lord. Father, we bless your name. We glorify you. We honor you. There's nobody like you in heaven above nor in earth beneath. We come before your presence, God, thanking you for your goodness, your grace, and your mercy. Father, we pray, God, and we say thank you for dying on the cross so that we would have the right to eternal life. We pray in the name of Jesus that the heavens would drop, that the skies would pour out righteousness, and that the earth would bring forth salvation. Say a word to us today, a word that would edify us, a word that would build us up in our most holy faith. Father, we're talking about our faith this month. We pray in the name of Jesus that everything that is said today, we will take it home with us and we would be better as a result of it. We thank you, God, for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your power. We thank you for your authority. We thank you, God, for your anointing that's going to fall in this house. We thank you, God, as you say a word to us. We will never be the same. We will never be the same. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody say amen. Come on and clap your hands and glorify God. Hallelujah. John chapter 11. Hallelujah. Woo! Glory to God. Feels good in here to me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So often, the enemy tries to rob us of the joy that comes with the presence of God. I grew up in a church, I'm sure you grew up in the same kind of church that would say, this joy I have, the world did not give it, and the world cannot take it away. Is anybody grateful for the joy of the Lord? The Bible says the joy of the Lord is our strength. Hallelujah. I'm strong today because of the joy of the Lord. I'm grateful for all of you that are in the sanctity of the sanctuary and those of you that are watching online. Thank you for being with us this morning. We're grateful. We, we want to let you know that uh, next week is Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday. We want you to invite someone to church with you. Come on, tell someone. Invite someone to church with you next week. But I want to let you know, you might want to come early because people like to come to church on Easter Sunday. So we want to make sure that everyone has a seat and everyone is comfortable. We want you to come next week enjoying the presence of the Lord, thanking him for dying on the cross so that you and I would have a right to eternal life. Do you have John chapter 11? When you have the word of God, I want you to signify by simply saying, yeah, uh-huh. John chapter 11. Thank you, musicians. You sound amazing today. God bless you. God bless you. Verse 32 says, Then when Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Therefore, when Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her weeping, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled. And he said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Somebody say, come and see. Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, see how he loved him and some of them said could not this man who opened the eyes of the blind also have kept this man from dying then Jesus again groaning in himself came to the tomb it was a cave and a stone lay against it Jesus said take away the stone Martha the sister of him who was dead said to him Lord, by this time there is a stench, for he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, did I not say to you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead man was lying. 
And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said to his father, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. And I know that you always hear me, but because of the people who are standing by, I said this, that they may believe that you sent me. Now when he had said these things, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. Somebody shout, Lazarus, come forth. And he who had died came out bound, hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was wrapped with a cloth. Jesus said to them, loose him and let him go. I'd like to teach for the next 10 or 15 minutes from the thought or the theme, loose him and let him go. Somebody say, loose him and let him go. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Lose him and let him go. As we continue our lessons on faith, we know if you've been here any time over the past month, we know that faith is complete trust and spiritual conviction and or confidence in something we cannot see or explicitly prove. Hebrews 11 and 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not seen. The difference, my brothers and my sisters, between faith and hope is faith is always in the present tense and hope is in the future tense. Can somebody say that with me? Say, faith is now and hope is in the future. Our faith grows by hearing the word of God. For the Bible says, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Hebrews 11 and 6 says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe, must first believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Anybody that wants to see God, you must go after him, not just on a Sunday morning, not just on a Wednesday night, not just on times when we come together for corporate worship, but every day when we get up on, in the morning, we should wake up and say, this is the day that the Lord has made. We choose to rejoice and to be glad in it. He that cometh to God must first believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seeks God. Faith is in the now. Somebody told me, if it's not now, then it's not faith. Can you say that with me? If it's not now, then it's not faith. It's very important that we understand how intentional and how powerful our God is. In that day, Lazarus was a very popular name, and I'm sure that the brother of Mary and Martha wasn't the only Lazarus who had died. Hundreds or even thousands of men named Lazarus could have and possibly would have come forth after the command of Jesus shouting, Lazarus, come forth, because the word of God doesn't go out void. And it will accomplish everything that he has sent it out to do. The Bible says, and when it returns to him, it will be pleasing. Many Lazaruses would have come out of the grave, causing mass hysteria. However, God's word is very powerful and very specific. He didn't need to call Lazarus' last name because remember, this particular Lazarus his sickness wasn't unto death anyway, but it was only to present and testify to the glory of God. God knows that the situation you're in is not unto death, but he knows exactly why you and I are placed in the situation. So when he commands it to stop 
or when he commands a situation to cease, you can rest assured that what God has for you, it is for you. And when he calls it for, your neighbor won't accidentally get up and start running away with the miracle that belongs to you. When he commands the storm to cease, from raging, your neighbor's storm won't accidentally stop and yours continue to rage. No ma'am, no sir. God, when he says Lazarus come forth, the exact Lazarus who had died came forth with the power of God. Somebody say Lazarus, come forth. There is a miracle, and it has your name on it, and when it is time for that thing to manifest, it will manifest appropriately and at the right time. You don't ever have to be jealous of your brother or your sister sitting next to you, because what God has for you, it is for you. If God made you a promise, then that promise is only going to happen when God wants it to happen. When God has healed your body or if God has a healing for you, it's not going to pass you by and go to somebody else. But the Bible says in Isaiah 53 and 5 that he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed. When God calls it forth, it is specifically going to happen for you. Look at somebody and say, God has a miracle, and it has your name on it. Also, we must be aware. We must know that God is fully aware of the conditions of your circumstances. He is so God that if he wanted to or needed to, he'd cut off the hearing to every other Lazarus at the time of his calling just so the right Lazarus would come forth and respond to him. This is why we should never be jealous. We should never be anxious or concerned that the wrong person walks away with the right blessing. What God has for you is for you, and what he has for me is for me. I've heard people say, oh, he or she walked away and walked off with my blessing. She walked off with my husband, or he walked off with my wife. They walked away with our house, or, with, or they walked away with our spouse. That's not possible. As a matter of fact, it is impossible. With man... The Bible says all things are impossible, with, but with God, all things are possible. It's impossible for somebody to walk away with your blessing. If they walked away with your man, your woman, your job, your finances, your house, or your spouse, then that wasn't yours at all. God is a specific and an intellectual God. He knows what he's doing. He's the kind of God that when he calls Lazarus forth, the only Lazarus that he wants to come forth will answer to his call. When he wants to heal your body, the only body that can be healed at the time of your healing is your body. Don't worry about what God is doing. Just have faith in God. Somebody say have faith in God. God shouted, Lazarus, come forth. And Mary and Martha's brother, the one whom he loved, immediately, the Bible says, came forth out of the tomb, bound hand and foot. Could it be that's exactly why Jesus wanted them to participate in this particular miracle? He didn't need it, but he wanted them to participate so the right miracle would come forth. Jesus asked them the question, where did you lay him? I want to ask you a question today. God wants us to participate in our own personal miracles. 
He wants us to participate in the miracle so that we would appreciate it when it comes forth. Where'd you lay down your miracle? Tell me where did you bury your gift? Under what rock did you hide what was valuable to your vision? Where did you stop loving me the way you used to, God is asking? Where did you stop serving me the way you used to serve me? Where did you decide you were no longer going to live for me any longer? What year was it that you decided to stop loving your spouse with the energy and the influence that was necessary for the impact and the success of your relationship? The reason I ask this is because people don't just fall out of love. But somewhere, a decision was made that your spouse was no longer worthy of your love, no longer worthy of your attention, no longer important to your life, and no longer worthy of your impact. It was there where we need to return to so that we can evaluate what really took place that made us even consider such a foolish decision or option in the first place. I grew up in a church, we used to sing a song that said, take me back, take me back, dear Lord, to the place where I first received you. Take me back, take me back, dear Lord, where I? Yeah, first believe. Y'all used to sing that song too? That was in the positive. But in our sermon this morning, we want to revisit the place that assisted us in making a decision that altered our lives in such a negative way that hopefully we can remember how we were feeling, what was going on in our lives or in our relationship with the hopes of regathering ourselves spiritually and emotionally so that hopefully we can get our swag back. Where did you lose your cutting edge? Ask somebody, where did you lose it? In Scripture, 2 Kings chapter 6, verses 1 through 7. I want you to go there with me. 2 Kings chapter 6, verses 1 through 7. Somebody say, this is going to help me live. The Bible says in verse 1, And the sons of the prophets said to Elisha, See now, the place where we dwell with you is too small for us. Please, let us go to the Jordan and let, us, and let every man take a beam from there and let us make there a place where we may dwell. So he answered, go. Somebody shout, go. go. Then one said, please consent to go with your servants. And he answered, I will go. So he went with them, and when they came to the Jordan, they cut down trees. But as one was cutting down a tree, come on, let's act like we're cutting down a tree. As one was cutting down a tree, the iron axe head fell into the water, and he cried out and said, Alas, master, for it was borrowed. So the man of God said, Where did it fall? And he showed him the place. So he cut off a stick and threw it in the water. And he made the iron axe head float. Therefore, he said, pick it up for yourself. So he reached out his hand and he picked it up. Can you tell somebody, we need to recapture our cutting edge. Come on, you got to say it better than that. Say, we need to recapture our cutting edge. By faith, God has the ability to help you to find whatever you lost. I don't care where you lost it. God can help you to find your cutting edge. God wants you to know that whatever you are doing for him, he wants you to keep on doing it. If he told you to cut down a tree, then he wants you to keep on cutting until the tree falls down. 
whatever God has for you, it is for you. And no devil in hell can rob you from the promise of God that is over your life. The Bible teaches us that every promise of God in him is yes and in him, amen. You often hear me say that there is a responsibility that comes along with every blessing. God could bless us without our permission. He could bless us without our participation. But I believe we appreciate it much more when we have to get down in the dirt and get calluses on our hands while removing the stone from the door. I'm believing God for a miracle right now, but it's going to take some fasting and prayer on my part so that when it happens, I'll appreciate it even the more. Our participation in the blessing and or the miracle is not so that we can take credit for it. I pray that we know by now that if God doesn't do it, it cannot be done. Somebody say, if God doesn't do it, it won't get done. That's not it at all, but if, we be, if we've learned anything through the month of faith, we understand this, that faith without works is, there you go, is dead. Somebody say, faith without works is dead. If we just believe God to do it and never put any effort behind our belief, it will not happen. Let's look at James chapter 2. James chapter 2, we're looking at verses 14 through 26. James chapter 2, verses 14 through 26. Somebody say, this is going to help me live. Faith without works is dead. Verse 14 said, what does it profit, my brethren, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can faith save him? If a brother or a sister is naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you says to them, depart in peace, be warmed and filled, but you do not give them the things which are needed for the body, what does it profit them? Thus also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without your works, and I will show you my faith by my works. You believe that there is one God, you do well. Even the demons believe and tremble. But do you want to know, O oh foolish man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered Isaac his son on the altar? Do you see that faith was working together with works, and by works faith was made perfect. And the scripture was fulfilled, which says, Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. And he was called a friend of God. You see then that man, was ju that man is justified by works and not by faith only. Likewise, was not Rahab the harlot also justified by works when she received the messengers and sent them out another way? For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Somebody say faith without works is dead. So we see then in our text that Lazarus, the brother of Mary and Martha, he was sick, but his sickness was not unto death. It was the same Mary that anointed the Lord with the fragrant oil and wiped his feet with her hair. It was the same Mary and Martha that were in the house attending to Jesus when he came to their house to eat a meal. They had a relationship with him, Therefore, they called on him in the time of need. Jesus responded to that sickness. He said, the sickness is not unto death, but that God 
would be glorified through this sickness. Our first principle I want to share with you this afternoon or this morning is you must have a relationship with God. Somebody say you must have a relationship with God. Don't wait until you need him before you call on him. See, some of us only come to church on Easter. And we get up, we lift our hands. Lord, please forgive me of our sins. Thank you for dying on the cross for everything. And then we don't see you again until next year around the same time. Don't wait until you need him to call on him. Mary and Martha had a significant relationship with Jesus. That's why they were able to call on him when their brother Lazarus got sick. The Bible says that they called on Jesus and because of his relationship with them, I didn't really understand this at first, Ma, but because of his relationship with them, he waited two days before he left to go see about Lazarus. Now because unto Joe of his relationship, I would believe that he would immediately go and see about Lazarus because of his relationship with the brother and the sisters. But he knew that Lazarus' sickness wasn't unto death, but that the glory of God would be manifested, so he waited where he was until Lazarus died so that the testimony would be greater. Can I help you to understand something? Sometimes God will leave you in a situation longer than you, you want to be left there. Not because he doesn't love you. Not because he doesn't know you. Not because you don't have a relationship with him. But because he wants the glory of God to be manifested through this testimony. He wants your testimony to be greater. If he leaves you there longer than you intend to be there, it's not because he don't know your name, it's not because he didn't hear you calling him, but it's because he loves you and he wants God's glory to be manifested through this situation. Can you look at somebody and say, there's going to be glory after this? Oh, I'm, I'm trying to help you to understand that God is waiting this long so that your testimony can be greater. You must have a relationship with God. Don't wait until you need him to call him, but call him before you need him and he'll be there when you need him. <laughs> they told us in the church I grew up in, he may not come when you want him, but he, come on, y'all preaching for me, but he's always on time. He's an on-time God. Yes, he is. You must have a relationship with him, and if you have a relationship with him, when you call him, he'll always be there. Watch what happens. He was on his way. He got up, and his disciples said, and his disciples said, listen. Jesus, why would you want to go there? These were the same people that were trying to stone you the last time you were there. Why would you go there? Jesus said, don't worry about it. I got everything under control. First of all, you have to have a relationship with Jesus. But number two, what we see in our text is we need to believe that Jesus will heal him and raise him up despite how bad the situation looks. I don't care how bad your situation is. We serve a God that can do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think. And it's according to the power that is already at work in us. Can you tell somebody I got power in me? And the power that's on the inside of me is going to help me to get to where God wants me to be. We need to believe that Jesus will heal and raise us 
up. Anybody in here that, that is sick or need God to do anything for you, you need to believe that he's able to do it. He's a, we thank God, and I tell y'all this all the time, we not only praise God for his ability, but we also praise him for his stability. You know, uh, my relationship with him gives me an anchor. And this anchor is here so that when the storm comes, when the winds blow, when the breakers dash, the songwriter said, I will not sway because I know he holds me fast. My soul is anchored in the Lord. We have to believe that Jesus is able to do exceeding and abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think. You can be sick in your body, but Jesus is a healer. You can be lost, but he will find you right at the nick of time. You can, your children can need deliverance, and he's the kind of God that will deliver right when they need to be delivered. We serve the kind of God that can do exceeding and abundantly above all that we can ever ask or think. He is greater, the Bible says, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Tell somebody he's that kind of God. We can't wait till we need him to call him, but we should call him before we need him, and when we call him, he'll be there right on time. Secondarily, when we believe that Jesus will heal Lazarus, we know by faith that when he calls him for, we don't have to doubt. No one has to wonder whether Lazarus was going to come forth or not. The Bible says in our text that he said, Lazarus, come forth. First of all, let me not miss this, because sometimes we want God to do everything while God is waiting for us to do something. He shows up to the place where he was dead, and he said, where have you laid him? And they showed Jesus where he was, and Jesus told them, roll back the stone. Now, some of y'all have been praying, and you've been fasting, and you've been asking God to do everything. But I tell you all the time, when we're praying, before we ask him for anything, we should start thanking him for everything. Lord, I thank you for my life. Lord, I thank you for my health. Lord, I thank you for my strength. I thank you for waking me up this morning. I thank you for giving me the activities of my limbs. I thank you for the breath that you've given me to breathe in my body. And the Bible says, let everything that have breath praise the Lord. So before I ask him for anything, I need to start praising him for everything. Because the breath that is on the inside of me, he's given me breath so I can praise him. We're waiting on him to do everything, and he's waiting on us to do something. He said, roll back the stone, and they began to roll back the stone. Watch what Martha says, because it's very significant to our text. She said, Jesus, by now there's a stench, because he's been dead for four days. Sometimes we get embarrassed by our circumstance, even to the point where we don't even want God to do anything about it because of our embarrassment. I don't care how long I've been dead. I don't care how long I've been in this situation. I don't care how bad it smells. If God is going to do it, let him do it. If God... Oh, I'm telling somebody he's able to do it and it doesn't matter how bad it is or how long it takes. God, however you're going to do it, do it. And he said, roll back the stone. They rolled back the stone and he yelled, Lazarus, come forth. The Bible says that Lazarus that was dead came forth bound, hand and foot, like this. Now, 
I can only imagine how those that were spectating felt when they saw Lazarus come forth. Even though they had belief in Jesus, you know what the preacher said to us a couple of weeks ago? I believe, but help the areas of my unbelief. Lazarus came forth bound hand and foot. And Jesus, I told you he wants you to participate in your own miracle. He looked at them and said, loose him and let him go. See, sometimes there's a mixed multitude in the crowd. The Bible told us, you, you read it with me, there was a mixed multitude in the crowd. There were some people that said, if he calls them forth, he's able to do it. But then there was another group of people that said, if he was able to keep people from being blind and he unstopped deaf ears, he's the same Jesus that should have been able to keep Lazarus from dying. There's always going to be a mixed multitude in the crowd. There'll be celebrators and there'll be haters. But I came to tell you, don't worry about either group. Did you hear what I just said? Don't focus on either group. Because neither of the group had the power to bring Lazarus forth. You need to focus on the Jesus that calls you forth. His voice said, Lazarus come forth, and Lazarus came forth, and Jesus told the people, loose him and let him go. And I believe he told them to loose him and let him go, not only naturally, but also spiritually. The reason why he died the way he died, because of the people holding him, the way they was holding him, the way they was keeping them where they was keeping them. Jesus told them, this sickness is not unto death. See, sometimes we get a negative report, and as soon as we get that negative report, we think death comes after it. The doctor said you got a bad sickness, and somebody comes and tells you what the doctor said, and we immediately think, uh-oh, it's over for them now. No, Jesus said, loose him and let him go. Not only physically, but spiritually, I want you to loose him and let him go. When I call him forth this time, don't let him die again. Don't let him go down again. Mary and Martha were the same ones that served Jesus. When Jesus said, loose him and let him go, what he was really saying is, don't let this happen again. You have the same, oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. You have the same power. You had the same power to call him forth. You did not need me to travel all the way from where I came from to bring him out of this tomb. You had the same power to call him forth just like me. And I prove it to you. Loose him and let him go. And when they begin to take things off of him, they begin to take the grave clothes. I believe, whoo, I believe some of you, although you're alive and breathing, you're bound by grave clothes. Just like Lazarus. That's why it's hard for you to move. That's why it's difficult for you to get your groove on. That's why it's hard for you to get from where you are right now to where God wants you to be. Because people around you are keeping you bound. Don't believe that everybody wants good for you. Everybody around you ain't good. Everybody that's with you is not for you. Did you hear what I just said? There's some people that see you bound and they hope you stay that way. Because there are some people that benefit from your dysfunction. Woo! Did you hear what I just said? There are some people that benefit from your dysfunction, and when Jesus showed up, they was upset. Shoot. He's about to come up out of that tomb. Shoot. He's about to come out of his grave clothes. Shoot. 
He's about to come back alive. Can you understand that you serve a God that's able to, he can do anything but fail. And when Jesus shows up, he shows up to deliver. He shows up to set you free. He shows up that those of us that were bound, he can loose you and let you go. That's exactly why he gave them the responsibility. He did what he had the power to do. Now he wants you to do what you got the power to do. He called Lazarus forth. Now he tells us to loose him and let him go. And when they began to loose him, Lazarus began to be who he was in the first place. He went back and Jesus, Jesus, Lazarus, Mary, Martha, and the disciples went back to the house and they ate a supper just like they did before. Jesus said, didn't I tell you that if you would just believe in me, he who was dead would live again? He said, didn't I tell you I was the resurrection and the life? He that was dead will live again? I believe Mary and Martha believed. I believe even Lazarus, who was dead, believed. But there were some people around that didn't believe. You got to make sure that your crowd around you can, can believe just like you believe. I don't want to tell you my problem if all you're going to do is cry. No, no. I need you to pray. I need you to intercede. I need you to fast just like I'm going to fast. I need you to intercede just like I'm going to intercede. If you shed a tear, the Bible says weeping may endure for a night, but joy is going to come in the morning. The Bible says the same thing that made you cry is the same thing that's going to make you dance. It made you cry yesterday, but today it's going to make you dance. All you got to do is wipe your weeping eyes and believe that God is able to do it. And if you believe that God is able to do what he asks you to do, then God can call him forth, loose him, and let him go. Lazarus, come forth. I got excited when I was reading this today because I'm not the only one that got some dead things around him. But I believe by faith that if we, like Jesus, have the authority to call Lazarus out of the tomb, you can call forth whatever's been dead around you. Call it forth. You know what it is. I, you know better than me what it is. Your children are acting crazy. Call it forth. Your body's been acting funny. Call it forth. Your finances ain't what they used to be. Call it forth. Because the same authority that Jesus had to call Lazarus out of the tomb is the same authority you have. Don't wait until you need him before you call him, but call him before you need him, and he'll be there when you call him. <laughs> Believe that Jesus will heal him and raise him up. And finally, look at somebody and say, participate in your own miracle. Don't just ask someone else to pray for you, but participate in your own miracle. Don't just ask your past, oh, pastor, can you pray for me? Yeah, I'll pray for you, but don't have me praying for you when you ain't praying for yourself. Participate in your own miracle and watch the same thing that happened to Lazarus happen to you. Loose him and let him go. Everybody standing. Loose him and let him go. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. I believe this is the season. I don't understand why you're going through what you're going through. I don't understand why I'm going through what I'm going through, but I do know this, that we have the power 
just like Jesus, to call those dead things forth. And I believe by faith that when you begin to call dead things forth, just like Lazarus came forth bound head to toe, y'all saw how I did it? I ain't going to do it again. I was looking like an idiot. I ain't going to do it again. But you saw how I did it. Y'all got the point, right? Watch how your miracle comes forth. It may come forth bound, but when Jesus says, loose him and let him go, it came forth stiff, but it's about to come forth loose. God has a way of doing things with no other he, he has a way of doing what no other power can do. The word of God says, with man it is impossible, but with God all things, yes, that's it, all things are possible. You know, I often, and some, somewhat, someone was smart enough to do this one day and put it on the t-shirt, it was great, but I, 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 I saw somebody and we often use the word impossible and someone took it and just had I am and separated possible instead of impossible they said I'm possible and I want to encourage somebody today that although you may feel sick, although your circumstance may seem dry, it's not unto death, but it's so that the glory of God can be made manifested in your life. There's somebody in this room today, you're going through something and you need God to work it out. I want you to raise your hand. I believe he's the kind of God that can do exceeding and abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think. And it's according to the power that's at work. Come on, our faith is lifted. We've been talking about faith for the past month and a half. Come on, lift your hands by faith. Father, as our hands are lifted, I pray that you would do it in the name of Jesus. This situation is not unto death, but it's so that the glory of God can be manifested. I pray and believe that you're going to get glory out of this. I don't know how, I don't know when, but I do know that you're able to do exceeding and abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think. And it's according to the power that is at work in us. There is power on the inside of us. Your word declares that in this earthen vessel, we have a treasure, that the excellency of the power may be of God, and out of us. I declare and decree that we are coming forth now just as Lazarus came forth. He came forth bound but you told the people around him, loose him and let him go. There is a loosing that is taking place right now. There's a freedom that is taking place right now. And as our hands are lifted, we believe it is done, it is so, and it is well. In the name of Jesus we pray. Everybody declare amen. If you believe it's done, clap your hands and give God praise in the building. Hallelujah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Hallelujah, continue to give God praise. Hallelujah, there's a word, praise God, in Matthew 21, it's called Hosanna. And that means that Jesus saves. And as he was coming into the city, the crowd declared Hosanna. You are coming into your blessing right now. And I want you to lift the words Hosanna up as loud as you can. And know that Jesus saves. Hosanna. Say it loud, Hosanna. Say it loud, Hosanna. Say it like you mean it, Hosanna. Say it like you feel it, Hosanna. Say it till you're delivered, Hosanna. Say it till your body's healed, Hosanna. Till your, your tears stop flowing, Hosanna. Till you feel the joy down deep in 
Jesus, we, we feel you. Praise God. If you haven't yet given in, in the offering, praise God, give again. Give with your whole heart. Praise God, we're getting ready to go home. But I promised myself before I surrender this mic, that this old body really, really needs. And that's a hallelujah praise. There were those Sundays when I was a, child, a young teenager. They would carry us out of church, praising God. Hallelujah. We'd go home and ride down the street and tears. Wouldn't we just jump out our cars? And we dance in the middle of the street because God was so good. Hallelujah. I want you to understand the same God wants to bring deliverance right now. So praise God as you go your way. I pray that God will cover you. That he will bless you. That he will keep you. Until we meet again. In Jesus' name. The people of God say amen. Hallelujah. Kingdom family. Kingdom family. I just want to remind everyone that this Saturday... If you have a child from the ages of 5 to 18, this Saturday we're having an Easter extravaganza and we really would love for your children to be a part. You do have to register. Um, the registration information is on the, the church's social media page. If you have any questions, see me after service. But it's an Easter event for the youth and um, young adult and we want everybody to come out and be a part. Thank you so much. From 12 to 3.